North Carolina Cooperative Extension, delivering university-based research for economic prosperity, a sound environment, and a better quality of life for all North Carolina citizens. North Carolina Cooperative Extension, we put the power of knowledge to work. At the heart of the North Carolina Cooperative Extension lives a deep-rooted belief that helping people put knowledge to work will improve the quality of their lives. This mission is the driving force behind nearly 100 years of cooperative extension work in North Carolina. By delivering research-based knowledge from the state's two land-grant universities, North Carolina State University and North Carolina A&T State University, Extension has helped the state address the challenges of the times through wars, depression, and prosperity. In 1914, the Smith-Lieber Act formally established the Agricultural Extension Service known today as Cooperative Extension. The state's 4-H youth development program took root around that time as youth corn and canning clubs flourished. During World War I, Extension helped control the boll weevil, one of the state's deadliest threats to cotton production. With World War II came victory gardens and scrap metal drives, and in the decades following the war, Extension expanded into urban areas to address new social and environmental issues. To broaden the resources available to counties, Extension recently launched the Gateway County Initiative, which engages universities and communities in two-way exchanges that address high-priority local needs. Today, North Carolina Cooperative Extension comprises a vast network of people and programs throughout all 100 North Carolina counties and the Cherokee Reservation. This includes a 31-member state advisory council and nearly 20,000 advisory leaders statewide who assess local needs and recommend programming to address those needs. Driven by a mission that's stronger than ever, Extension continues to meet the needs of changing times, working hard to strengthen the economy, protect the environment, and improve the quality of life for all North Carolinians. When Hurricanes Fran, Floyd, and Isabel spread destruction across North Carolina, assistance flowed to the state from around the country. So when Katrina and Rita devastated the Gulf Coast in September of 2005, North Carolina 4-H'ers decided to return the favor. Helpful Hands, Healing Hearts has been called the largest 4-H project since World War II. Youth across the state demonstrated their compassion by raising money and collecting supplies for 4-H'ers and their families in Mississippi and Louisiana. Youth collected hygiene supplies for essential kits and school supplies and small toys for children's clover kits. In October, nearly 8,000 of these kits were delivered by tractor trailer to the Gulf region. More than $21,000 was also raised and donated to assist 4-H and cooperative extension families who lost so much to the storms. This is an extraordinary moment in NC State's history because it is the greatest utilization of and mobilization of our network that we've ever had. I don't want that to get lost in a lot of what we say today because you're a part of something that's historic, something that I believe will have not only impact today but for many years to come as we think about how we help others. As you know, Cooperative Extension's mission is to help and philosophy is to help people put knowledge to work. I must say that this project has not only put knowledge to work, but it also epitomizes the 4-H motto of making the best better. But that's what America is all about, and you're showing folks that North Carolina really cares, but more importantly, uh, you're saying that 4-H'ers really do care, and it's all about helping one another. The truth is, you know, helpful hands and healing hearts is a great slogan, but that's what 4-H is always been about. From orange-fleshed watermelons to extra-sweet tomatoes, unique new crops are sprouting up all over North Carolina thanks to the North Carolina Specialty Crops Program. The Specialty Crops Program is a unique partnership between North Carolina State University, the Extension Service, and North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. And it's a joint effort that we're doing to develop new crops and develop the marketing systems to go with those new crops. So how do new items like white-fleshed peaches make it onto grocery store shelves? 
the Specialty Crops Program solicits proposals from county agents, researchers, and industry on probable new crops, then evaluates each crop's chances for success. Once a new crop is under development, marketing specialists conduct in-store sampling and consult with buyers to determine consumer demand. When we've gone through all the process of uh, looking at a product and its market potential and packaging the information and, and uh, production practices, uh, I take it out to the growers and we actually uh, produce the crop. We start out on a limited scale and we learn from feedback from doing it out on the farm. We have, actually have feedback from the farm and we go forward with the marketing. And that's what we're looking for for North Carolina, the, the specialty things that will make our farmers more money. Cooperative Extension has a long history of providing education to help families understand how good nutrition and physical activity can help adults and children avoid preventable conditions like diabetes and heart disease. Several recent Extension initiatives are designed to help young and old alike lead healthier lifestyles. Color Me Healthy is a nutrition education program that targets four and five-year-olds in child care settings. Cooperative Extension trains child care workers in a curriculum to use colorful posters, photographs, and music to teach children the benefits of good nutrition and physical activity. Learning these lessons while they're young may help children carry healthy lifestyles into adulthood. Cooperative Extension is a partner in two efforts to improve nutrition and physical activity among school children as well. Extension, along with the State Division of Public Health and the Department of Public Instruction, developed nutrition and physical activity standards for schools. The standards give schools target goals to improve what students eat and how active they are in school. Extension's nutrition programs also target adults. At the popular grilling and chilling event held in western North Carolina, adults learn to create healthy dishes from commodities produced locally. This year's event included demonstrations on grilled beef dishes as well as fresh fruit and vegetable dishes. It was very good. I enjoyed all. Controlling insect populations where they aren't welcome has long challenged researchers. In recent years, entomologists at North Carolina's land-grant universities have focused on ways to curb insect intrusion with little harm to humans and the environment. It's called IPM, or Integrated Pest Management. North Carolina Cooperative Extension has launched an IPM information campaign among state school leaders. Extension specialists explain how IPM can help control insect infestation in school properties while limiting the use of pesticides. IPM is especially important to schools because active children can easily come in contact with pesticide residue on floors and walls. A goal of IPM is to uncover the reasons that cause a pest problem and solve the root problem before taking further action. In 2004, Dr. Godfrey Nalianya, an extension associate for Urban IPM, presented a series of workshops on integrated pest management. He convinced several school districts to adopt the IPM approach. He says more attention to school safety and fewer chemicals are attractive to teachers, students, and parents. And North Carolina's Department of Public Instruction agrees. Ben Matthews, director of school support, says anything we can do to reduce the use of chemicals is good for the state. If NC State researchers and extension specialists have their way, you can add southern flounder to the list of barnyard animals. Researchers at the university's fish barn facility in Raleigh are perfecting indoor flounder production, adding another product to the state's growing aquaculture industry. Cooperative Extension has been instrumental in building the state's production from a handful of trout ponds and a few acres of catfish ponds to the $54 million business it is today. North Carolina now supports more than 2,000 acres of catfish ponds and 760 acres of hybrid striped bass ponds. The state is the second leading producer of trout in the nation. Add that to nine commercial indoor fish barns with three more on the way, and you see the growth potential ahead. Researchers and extension professionals are busy working to improve the productivity of aquaculture operations. 
Agents like Mike Frensko are helping growers explore new aquaculture species like freshwater prawns, large shrimp raised in outdoor ponds. And they're also helping to seek funding for more new enterprises, as well as building better markets for the state's seafood producers. North Carolina Cooperative Extension, through our network of campus specialists, county field faculty, volunteers, and advisors, we help families, businesses, and communities achieve prosperity today and meet the challenges of tomorrow. North Carolina Cooperative Extension, Knowledge is power.